we have to take a look at, and especially with multifamily buildings that are very occupant dense, is looking at the primary energy demand. Um, so the primary energy demand looks at all the energy that's consumed along the way, both from the site energy and then also going back to the source energy. So as we produce a K KW of electricity, uh, that kilowatt of electricity is going to uh, have associated losses with it. As it's produced at the, the power plant, there's going to be transmission and distribution losses. As it's consumed in the building, there's going to be efficiency losses from the actual appliances themselves. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're taking all that into account. And with a very occupant dense building, we have to really scrutinize all of the electrical and, and gas consuming uh, equipment that we're installing inside of the building. Um, so it makes, sure, makes us put in the most efficient uh, systems we can. So the primary energy demand for Passive House is 38 kBTU per square foot. And again, going back to that square foot number, it's based on uh, the actual area of the building. So if you have a lot of people in a very small area, you're going to have a very high primary energy uh, load in the building. So we want to try to do things to minimize that. So it's, you know, specking Energy Star appliances. We're looking at uh, those Design Lights Consortium for, uh, for efficient fixtures and luminaires. Uh, we're making sure that any of the circulators that are installed are electronically commutated and have very low energy use. The elevators, any vertical transport, uh, the actual uh, heating and cooling system with the VRF, making sure it's very very efficient. So the idea is that we're bringing driving down that primary energy uh, by putting in the most efficient uh, units we can. And if you do everything right, then you'll hit the passive house standard targets. Um, so we're looking at uh, 4.75 kBTU per square foot year for our heating demand and our cooling demand. We were looking for our primary energy demand of 38 kBTU per square foot per year. And then we're looking at a building air tightness of 0.6 ACH at 50 pascals. So where are we right now with our model and our building as, uh, as it's being constructed? Uh, we actually have have a yearly heating demand of 2.85 kBTU per square foot year. And you can really see it in this bar chart. Uh, you can see that we have losses through the ventilation system because the ventilation system isn't 100% efficient. So we're always gonna bring in some cold air, even though we're doing a good heat exchange. And then we have uh, losses through our wall assemblies and our windows. So as we, uh, the heat is lost through the, the, var the variety of assemblies we have in our building enclosure, uh, we're gonna have this you know, to be needed to be made up by our, by our heating system and our, and our internal gains. But you can see that you know, if you look at it from a passive house perspective, uh, you can see that we're using our solar gains first as the primary source of heat energy in the building. And we can do that because we have a very robust building enclosure. We're going to hold on and we're going to retain that heat as it's coming in through the windows. So the idea is that, you know, in a traditional uh, building that's built with, you know, let's say half the R value uh, in, you know, in the wall assemblies and the, and the, the floor and the ceilings, uh, they may not, it may not retain the heat as well as, you know, as, as a passive house structure. So we really can't count on that solar gain to be able to use as a vehicle to heat the building. Uh, uh, but in Passive House, we can because we have that heat retention capabilities. Uh, the next thing we're going to use is our internal gains. So any uh, gains from people, appliances, lights, anything that's in the building that's generating heat, that's also going to be a heat source for, for our building. And then once we tally those up, whatever's remaining is then the size of our heating system. Um, so again, we have a, a very ec economical, ec economically sized uh, heating system uh, due to we're taking all this internal and solar gains into account. But these things actually work uh, against us in the summertime. So you can see that 2.85 kBTU per square foot year for our yearly heating demand uh, becomes 3.80 uh, kBTU per square foot year uh, for our cooling demand. Because now we have to now cool off all of this uh, uh, internal gains and we have to you know, do a proper shading and try to reduce our solar gains as much as possible. So all this that was working you know, for us during the heating season is going to work against us during the cooling season. So we have to make sure that we have a cooling system that's size large enough to handle uh, those internal gains and, and the solar gains. Primary energy, like I said, it's tough. Uh, 38 kBTU square foot year is our, uh, our target. We're at 37.4. So uh, again, with a very uh, occupant dense building, you know, and that's typical of affordable housing, we really want to make sure that we're doing the best job as we can to you know, spec the most efficient appliances and, and products uh, to really keep that primary energy below that 38 kBTU square foot year. Uh, and then building air tightness, uh, again, it's 0.6 ACH at 50 pascals. Uh, we're actually shooting for the 0 0.033 uh, CFM per square foot of enclosure, and that actually translates into 0.2 uh, ACH at 50 pascals. So a very, very uh, high level of air tightness is, is a target for this building. Uh, and again, we know the qualitative testing that and the quantitative testing that we're doing on site is you know, confirming that we're getting close to hitting those targets. So it's going to become a reality very soon. Mm -hmm.